Chapter 1. Let's watch a movie preview. Part 1. There was a saying that all men are created equal. At the same time, it was also said that nobody is born perfect. If both of these phrases were valid, then the order of heaven would be unenforceable. As a person's value would change depending on the region they're from, one cannot just dismiss their values entirely. Let alone being born perfect, just being born with one talent is difficult enough. While the common folk may be envious or jealous of geniuses around them, for me their talents are just a part of our daily lives, so I don't see what the fuss is all about. It was the end of summer vacation. I was having such a conversation with my old mate Fukube Satoshi, who nodded in agreement with my thoughts. Exactly. For the past 15 years of my life, I haven't seemed to be the sort to possess any talents at all. There's a saying that great talents mature late, but that sounds more like working hard through nurture rather than talent. So I guess wishing for some talents is a distant dream for us. Well, geniuses are geniuses for a reason. If we common folk could obtain their talents, then we wouldn't need to be envious of them. My, longing for the life of common folk now, aren't you, Hotaro? If it's you, then... Satoshi then casually quipped. I think you're actually quite talented. I had no idea what he was talking about. As I gave a puzzled look, Satoshi chuckled and said, I know very well that I'm not the talented sort, but the same cannot be said about you, Hotaro. What? As his manner of speaking was usually filled with jokes, I thought a little about accepting the good parts of what he just said at face value. I had two rebuttals to make. Firstly, if I had to say it, I think it's premature of you to call yourself a normal person. Aren't you pretty good at collecting vast amounts of knowledge? Satoshi shrugged his shoulders. Well, I guess, even if it sounds like bragging. Though I wouldn't go so far and say that I'm good enough at winning quiz shows, the knowledge I learned isn't that vast. Really. Anyway, second rebuttal. If I wasn't a normal person, then there's no way I could observe people. Then I won't say anything more, though I still have reservations about you not having any talents. Where have you ever seen me using my talents anyway? Hmm, where, huh? After pretending to think, he pointed his finger towards Kamiyama High School. There. The school? No, the geology room, aka the classic club room. You were simply amazing in solving the Hyoka incident. Truth be told, I never expected you to be that good. That's why I said I'm having reservations about you not being talented based on that. He said while smiling. In contrast, I looked bitter. The Hyoka incident. It was not a criminal incident, neither was it civil. Hyoka was the name of a series of essay anthologies published by the Classics Club, a mysterious organization which Satoshi and I belonged to. The reason why the anthologies were named as such cannot be explained in a few sentences, and for a very good reason as well. Thanks to such a reason, I was involved in all sorts of bothersome events, and Satoshi was commenting on my role in such events. He continued. The one who solved all of that was you. Now you're exaggerating. I was just lucky. Lucky, huh? I wasn't talking about how you think of yourself, but how I see you. He can't say such haughty stuff with such a calm tone. As I was used to his manner of speaking, I was hardly annoyed. Besides being an old mate, Fukube Satoshi is also a good rival. As a guy, he was short in stature, and his weak-looking appearance could easily be mistaken for that of a girl if seen from afar. However, he is actually quite spirited, especially when pursuing things that interest him. So much so that he would prioritize that over other things that are considered necessary by everyone else. He is always seen carrying a smile in a drawstring bag. As he swung the drawstring bag around, he asked, By the way, what time is it now? Check your own watch. 
It's inside my bag. It's too bothersome to take it out. He tapped at his bag and said. Satoshi considered carrying a wristwatch around too troublesome and would prefer to check the time via his cell phone. I'm the one that's feeling bothersome here. If I don't have to do it, I won't. If I have to do it, hurry up and finish it. Right? Satoshi smiled while poking fun at my motto. I checked the time on my wristwatch and corrected him. It's, if I have to do it, make it quick. Anyway, it's just past ten. Do you really have to memorize every word of that? It's not like it's some grandiose motto or anything. Wow, is it ten already? We'd better hurry. Standa-san may be able to forgive us for being late, but it's Mayaka I'm afraid of. I agree with that. Ibarra Mayaka can be very scary when she's angry. I don't know if Satoshi knows this or not, but I have a feeling that Chitanda Eru is the same as well. As Satoshi picked up his speed, I followed suit. Crossing the crosswalk, we came upon the school gates. It was a typical day in Kamiyama High, where there are students everywhere despite it being a school holiday. The courtyard was filled with students either in uniform or casual wear. The music from the musical clubs could be heard playing. Besides the courtyard, some sort of large monument was being erected, probably some attraction devised by some club. Even though it was summer vacation, Kamiyama High School was still filled with students full of energy, as everyone was preparing for the cultural festival. The total number of students attending Kamiyama High School numbered around a thousand. The school provided curriculum for university entrance exams, as well as having a lively club activity scene. If you excluded the exalting cultural festival, Kamiyama High was just no more school like any other. The campus contained three buildings. The general block, which houses the regular classrooms, the special block with the special purposes classroom, and the gymnasium. The classic club room was located in the geology room on the fourth floor of the special block. Amidst the singing of the chorus club and the a cappella club from the courtyard, we hastened our pace. As Satoshi said, my motto was, if I don't have to do it, I won't. If I have to do it, make it quick. To put it simply, I was an energy saver. Such a lifestyle was totally different to those that go all out in these student activities like the cultural festival. Though I wasn't in the mood to think about such things now. From the entrance, we headed towards the corridor leading to the special block. A long painting from some club could be seen placed on the side of the staircase to dry as we climbed them, taking four steps at a time, which was quite exhausting. As it was late summer, I took out my handkerchief to wipe my sweat as we entered the geology room. We were at once greeted by someone yelling, You're late! Standing firmly in the center of the room like a guardian god was none other than Ibarra, the actual person in charge of overseeing the publication of the Classics Club anthology Yoka, with whom I have a long acquaintance. Ibarra Mayaka. While we were not exactly intimate with each other, for some reason we just couldn't avoid seeing each other all the time. While she had grown since primary school, she still had a childish-looking face despite being a high school student. Despite her appearance, she was actually quite strict. Besides being unforgiving to mistakes made by others, she was even more demanding towards herself. The reason for her wrath was simple, as it was agreed that we were supposed to meet up here at 10 in the morning. Maintaining a guardian god stance, Ibarra spoke. Huko-chan, explain yourself. Satoshi's smile became stiff as he said, Well, we couldn't use our bikes today. You should have known that already. By the way, while people were free to come to Kamiyama High School via bicycle during summer vacation, as the bicycle park was currently under maintenance, it wasn't usable. Get a grip already, Fuku-chan. You still haven't handed in your manuscripts. Satoshi spread out his hands as he struggled to protest. W wait a minute, Mayaka. Isn't Hotaro late as well? Ibarra turned to look at me, and upon meeting my gaze, turned back towards Satoshi. Who cares about Oreki? Double standards, huh? The reason Ibarra paid so much attention to Satoshi was because she had a crush on him. And she herself made no attempts to hide this. On the other hand, Satoshi had been evading her advances to this day. As to when they started all this, I had no idea. 
Anyway, the Classics Club was made up of four members. Myself, Satoshi, and Ibarra, as well as the president, Chitanda Eru. Though right now, Chitana was nowhere to be seen. That's double standards! What are you talking about? There's no double standards. I interrupted their meaningless exchange and said, Hey, Ibarra, Chitana's absent as well. How can I have double standards, uh, huh? Chichan. That's right, she still hasn't arrived. That worries me. I see, indeed, it's not double standards, Satoshi muttered. Yeah, it's triple standards. Unusually, Ibarra replied while smiling. As if on cue, a silhouette was seen silently opening the door and entering the room. It was Chitanda. Chitanda Eru. With her long, dark hair and frail-looking figure, she gave the look of an elegant lady. And that was a fact, as she was a daughter of the Chitanda clan, which owned vast tracts of farmland within a corner of Kamiyama city. However, in contrast to her graceful nature, were her large eyes. To me, those were what represented her the most. If Ibarra was a child in appearance, then Chitara was a child due to her incredible curiosity to every mystery she ever encountered. Yet she was intelligent despite such a childlike nature, which made it all the more difficult to cope with her. The clock pointed to half past ten. Chitanda bowed deeply and said, I'm very sorry for being late. Chitanda hardly ever looked this unkempt. While not strictly punctual, it was rare to see her late. Ibarra must have been thinking the same thing, as she asked Chitana without blaming her. Did something happen? Yes, a little bit. I was having a long conversation just now. What conversation? We won't know if you don't elaborate. That said, Chitana continued before I could ask. I'll explain later about what conversation I was having. What's she up to? I have a bad feeling about this. Hmm. Oh well, let's get started then. The reason the Classics Club was gathered here today was to hold a meeting concerning the publication of the club anthology Yoka, which included what design and fonts to use, how to arrange the articles, and what paper to print on. While it would have been better if I had just suggested to let Hibara handle everything, she probably wouldn't allow it, as she reasoned that since we have all contributed our money and manuscripts, it's only fair that we take part in compiling the anthology as well. I didn't exactly want to do this, but then I don't have anything better to do during summer vacation anyway. Ibarra took out a few paper samples from her bag and began speaking. This is the highest quality paper that a budget could allow, while this is the cheapest. They're very different, and not just in appearance, but how the ink appears on them. As she began explaining, both Satoshi and Jitanda listened with enthusiasm. While I felt like a piece of rotting wood in the mountain, I still made an effort to listen, so that Ibarra wouldn't get mad. The editorial meeting was over sooner than expected, just under an hour after it began. Ibarra had written down the items which had been approved in her notes, which she would then relay to the publishers. Being an editing supervisor sure sounds tough, so I placed my prompts together in gratitude of her hard work. It was now afternoon. While we were free to go home, we decided to stay and have lunch, having just bought some box lunch from the convenience store. As I took my box lunch worth less than 400 yen out of my shoulder bag, the other three followed suit. As he peeled the film wrapping around his rice bowl, Satoshi spoke without addressing anyone specifically. So, when's the anthology gonna be published? The one who should have an idea as to how to answer that question was of course Ibarra, who grumbled as though saying, as if I could remember exactly when, and said, We should have the sample copy by early October, but we won't be getting the actual copies until just before the cultural festival. It was now late August, a week to go before summer vacation ended. It would become bothersome to continue writing when classes resumed in September. As an energy saver, I do not like to leave work undone as it's inefficient. It's of course better to get it finished as soon as possible. Anyway, we've still got plenty of time. The sound of Chitana opening the lid of her box lunch could be heard. For girls her age, box lunches would usually be small and contain food as simple as small snacks. 
Though her box was just as small, the food it contained looked quite filling. Stewed butter burr, sweet omelettes, and minced meat. Before taking out her chopsticks, she asked enchantly, By the way, are any of you tied up this afternoon? As I was never the sort with anything better to do, I do have time to kill. Naturally, I shook my head. So too did he better. I've got to take these notes to the publisher, but it won't be until this evening. Satoshi thought for a while. I was thinking of heading to the handcraft club to see if I could help out. I haven't gotten my hands on sewing equipment for some time now. Besides, it's been a while since I hung out with the student council committee. But why not? As all three of us were in agreement, Chitana looked as though she was the happiest person alive. Seeing her smile, I suddenly had a bad feeling. Though I wouldn't go so far as to say this was based on experience, I was just apprehensive of trouble, that's all. As she placed her chopsticks down, she said with vigor, Then let's watch a movie preview. A preview? I had no idea what she was talking about. Did something happen which I have no knowledge of? Without thinking, I turned to look at Satoshi, who simply shook his head to indicate he knew nothing. Ditto for Ibarra, who looked puzzled. Chichan, what preview are you talking about? A movie? Yes, um, it's not really a movie, but more like a videotaped movie. Videotaped movie? Surely she means homemade movie. Is it with the movie studies club? Chitana shook her head. Not really. Then the home movie studies club? Stop being stupid, Satoshi. Both Ibarra and I stared coldly at his smiling face, though he continued smiling as usual and said, I'm sure it exists. If there exists a classics club, surely a home movie studies club would exist as well. Satoshi dispelled his joke right away, true to his motto of, jokes are to be made on the spot, so too are misunderstandings to be dispelled right away. If it says it exists, then it probably does exist. This was not something to be surprised about, as Kamiyama High School does have a huge variety of arts-based clubs out there. But still, Chitana shook her head. It's not that either. It's an exhibition movie made by Class 2F. Oh, class exhibition. Ibarra nodded in admiration. Don't think my class would have the energy to organize their own exhibition, as everyone's busy with their own clubs. Indeed. Even for my Class 1B, no one made any proposals to organize something for the cultural festival in the class's name, as everyone was tired out by their own club activities. Besides, holding an exhibition would be quite a huge task. Come to think of it, this would make Satoshi pretty amazing, as he's busy with the classics club and the craft club and student council. Some Class 2F students belonging to various sports team decided they too wanted to take part in cultural festival. As I know someone for Class 2F, I was invited to their movie preview in order to ask my opinion of it. How about it? Are you interested? Yeah, I'll come. Satoshi agreed without even batting an eyelid. Then again, anything that interests him would elicit such a reaction. Ibarra raised the brows slightly and asked, What kind of movie is it? Um, I hear it's a mystery movie. That answer was enough to satisfy Ibarra. Sounds entertaining. Sure, I'll come as well. I thought you hated artistic movies, Maeka. I don't dislike them. This one's made by people with an interest in movies, after all. Indeed, no one would think along the lines of wanting to watch a movie made by people who just want to take part in a cultural festival. Now, what about me? To be honest, I'm not exactly that interested in movies. I've never felt like watching any movie, whether it was art house movies or blockbuster movies. As to why that is, I'm not too sure myself. Probably something to do with watching movies being too time consuming. I was told that I'm missing half the fun of my life as a result. I don't exactly hate watching them, and there were even some movies which I was fond of. Anyway, guess I'll go home. Before I could speak, Chitana cheerfully opened her mouth. Then it's decided. We're all going then. 
No, I... Actually, besides myself, I was told to bring three more people along with me. I was thinking that there are three of you here in the classics club. The number is just right. She's not even listening. Smiling mischievously, Satoshi pointed his thumb at me and said, Chinana-san, Hotaro seems to have something to say. Oriki-san, you're coming, right? Uh... Aren't you? Uh... Why was it that I could never figure out how to handle Chitanda every time? No matter what kind of responses I thought of beforehand, she was bound to make me go. Of course, I could have chosen to just turn her down without feeling guilty, but the problem was I could find no reason to refuse her. I shrugged my shoulders in resignation. Whatever, there was nothing for me to do even if I went home anyway. The audiovisual room had its curtains drawn, blocking out the light of the setting sun from outside, turning the room dark. From within that darkness, a female student emerged suddenly. The reason for such an illusion probably had something to do with the navy blue dress she was wearing, which blended well with the darkness. Chitana called out to her. I've come, as you requested me to. She walked towards us, and it was only then I could make out her features. Her height was similar to Chitanda's, perhaps a bit taller, while her figure was slim. Her eyes were slightly raised and small, and her face looked refined. It wouldn't be too far off to describe her as pretty, though to me she felt more stern than pretty. While it was hard to say whether she was a year older than us, there was a sense of majestic solemnity exuding from her. Rather than a high school student, she felt more like a stereotypical police officer or teacher. No, more like a female self-defense force officer, with a rank no lower than major. Speaking in a calmly soft voice, she said, Ah, so you've come. She looked at each one of us and continued, Welcome. You have my thanks for taking the time to come. Chitana slowly introduced us one by one. This is Ibarra Mayaka-san, Fukube Satoshi-san, and Oreki Hotaro-san. Like me, they're all members of the Classics Club. The girl seemed to give a rather ambiguous expression as we were being introduced. I couldn't tell if she was smiling or looking depressed. But she soon reverted to her previous expression and bowed to us. Pleased to meet you. My name is Irisu Fuyumi. As she introduced herself, Satoshi reacted at once and raised his voice in exultation. Ah, just as I thought, you're Irisu-senpai. I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. Your name is Fukube Satoshi-kun, right? I'm sorry, but have we met before? You attended the meeting for the cultural festival organizing committee during the end of June, right? I can't quite remember. Did something happen? Regardless of whether she really forgot or was playing dumb, Irisu answered as such. Satoshi continued cheerfully. I saw the way you resolved the conflict between the musical clubs and the drama clubs. Truth be told, I was amazed. Since then, I've always wanted to meet with you at least once. Ah, now I remember, she replied bluntly. I didn't do anything particularly special then. No, really, you were great. I still remember it now. Three times you urged a chairperson to duly restore order at once so members could voice their opinions without interruptions. The conflict was sorted in less than five minutes as a result. I virtually gave a standing ovation in the bottom of my heart, as Irisu Senpai felt more like the chairperson back then. If Ibarra was not the sort to give compliments, then it was also rare for Satoshi to give praise to someone in such an over-the-top way. Now, here's the interesting part. How would Irisu Fuyumi react to such a compliment? I listened intently as I wondered. Yet, despite Satoshi's gait of admiration, she hardly reacted much and said, Is that so? Irisu-san, you did say you weren't that interested in what happens around school, right? Chitana asked, to which Irisu nodded. Fukube-kun was part of the comedy on my behalf as club president, so that meeting probably did happen. So please don't be too startled by his words. I see. I wasn't really startled, though. Satoshi looked dejected as she said that. Ibarra then asked Chitanda. 
Chichan, how are you equating with her? It is a son? Our families are quite close to each other. It is a son would often look after me when I was younger. So the Chitana clan does have people to hang out with as childhood friends. That sure is some luxury the Oreki clan couldn't afford. They sure are a prominent clan. Come to think of it, was it his clan also just as famous? I'm not quite sure myself. Anyway, it probably doesn't concern Irisu Fugumi herself. Anyway, Irisu returned to the subject at hand and showed us the object she was holding. The rectangular object seemed to be a video cassette. You have been invited today to watch this tape. As I'm sure you've heard from Chitando already, this movie is a movie made by my class. My wish is for you to watch the movie and give us your honest feedback. We look forward to doing so, so said Chitando. Seemed like a real movie preview, alright. But what for? As the question popped in my head, I asked. Is that all we have to do? Irisu looked straight at me with her green gaze. Feeling the pressure from her gaze, I continued. Just watch and then provide feedback? Is that so strange? Even if we really do give our critique, you're not going to amend the movie, are you? Surely a preview is mainly for the purpose of advertisement, where you ask people to spread the word about your movie, isn't it? For some reason, it is nodded as though satisfied. A good question. Indeed, there is no point in just watching this movie. I will answer your question, but it would be better if you could first watch the movie. Shall we? Hmm. Something didn't feel right. But due to her efficient answer, I said no more. Upon seeing my agreement, it is continued. We have yet to give this movie a name. For now, it simply goes by the working title, Mystery. When the video ends, there's something we would like to ask of you. For that purpose, we wish for you to watch it first. This time it was Ibarra's turn to speak. If it's called Mystery, then is it a detective movie? It wouldn't be wrong to call it that. Then, may we take memos during the movie? Of course, to write as many details as you see. That said, we left all our stuff in the geology room. As Ibarra was about to ask if we could go back to get our bags, Satoshi spoke. I'll do the memo taking, then. And Julie took out a notebook from the drawstring bag he always carries along. I didn't know he'd brought that inside as well. Irisu looked at her simply designed silver wristwatch and said, Now, let us start. Please take a seat. As suggested, we took the seats nearest to us. Satoshi opened his notebook while Irisu headed towards the control room. Before entering the iron door, she turned to us and said, Enjoy the movie. As she closed the door, a mechanical sound could be heard. A white screen slowly descended before us. We duly sat upright and leaned as far back as possible. By the way, it is so sure didn't prepare enough for this preview. She should at least have provided us with some popcorn. <laughs>